So it's a lovely winter's day today and it's really warm. So I thought I'd do my one year or almost as being a beekeeper. So I don't know if you know, but some of you might do that I've only been beekeeping since May 2023. So not even a year yet. I've not even done my basic bee assessment, which is where I have to have an entire colony through a whole year having the bees survive the winter. And when they survive the winter, I can then take a course um, just to pass the uh, bee assessment. And I'll be doing that this year, because say at the moment it's almost February and I've got five colonies all looking strong, all really good. So I'm really pleased about that. I'm pleased that they're doing well. So I'll talk you through quickly just the stuff I did in the first year um, with beehives, with tools, um, just all, all the stuff I learned basically in that one year of being a, well, you know, not one year, but almost one year of being a beekeeper. So the first thing I'd like to say is when I started, I took a course, two courses online, just a basic beekeeping. Um, I've always had a big fascination with insects anyway, so it was kind of a natural route for me. I wanted to become more self-sufficient with like my foraging or I forage, um, bits and bobs to eat like dandelion, you know, stinging nettle, plantain, all stuff like that, hawthorn, hawthorn berry, elderberry, all that sort of stuff. So I naturally progressed to beekeeping and I took a course, an uh, in-person course with the Beekeeping Association in my local area, so that's Portsmouth. I met incredible people there, really good people and one of them, a guy called Mihai, who you've probably seen in my videos, um, kind of formed a really good friendship with him. So it's definitely worth going on these, on these courses. You can make lots of good connections, you can meet lots of like-minded people and people who are willing to help and share information with you guys to help you to understand what beekeeping is all about. And there are, are people out there who can support you and help you become a better beekeeper. Now there's a famous saying, if you ask a beekeeper a question, you're gonna get a hundred answers, all different. And it's true. What I like to do is I like to learn from all the beekeepers around me and that way I can adapt what they tell me to how I work. Does that make sense? So one beekeeper might tell me not to move the queen this time of year, another one might say do it, another one might say wait a few weeks, another one might say put the queen in here first or do this with the queen. But you just take all the information in and don't get overwhelmed by it but then just um, you know adapt it to how you work. I was talking about hives beehives so the first thing I went for the cheapest hive I could get I bought a hive online and it had everything with it so it had the brood box you had the honey supers you had the roof you had the, uh, the rower tray at the bottom you had the landing board you had the whole lot everything you had uh, enough frames in there as well for one honey super and enough brood, brood frames for your box as well so the deal was a package of everything and you also got your hive tool as well. And I think a smoker, if I can remember that far back. It wasn't that long ago, but you know, <laughs> I am getting old. I think he did get smoker with it. But anyway, so I bought it, but I bought the cheapest thing I could find. And it was for about just under 200 pounds. It was made of pine wood. And now I didn't know what I was doing really. So I set the bees up in February. I got my hive all set up in February, all ready to go, but it was a really, really cold spring. So there was no bee activity till at least May when they started to swarm. Because my goal was to catch a swarm. And that's another benefit of signing up with your association. You go on a swarm list. So when swarms happen in the local area, the association sends someone around and for a small fee, you get your own colony of bees. Uh, I have a video of that and I will stick that on here somewhere. Maybe, if I can get this right, up here somewhere, just of my bees when they first turned up, which was say last May. So with the beehives, I went for pine wood and I didn't paint it. So by the time May came around, my hive has been through all the weather in February, March, April. So it was a mixture of rain, you know, heat, cold, hot, and it split the wood. The wood's cracked all the way around. Every single one of my boxes cracked. My roof was okay but it was the brew box, the honey super and the, uh, the floor all split in certain areas due to the it being pine wood. So what I did is I contacted a supplier and they sent me 
the same stuff again, but a cedar wood, which is a very strong wood, and the hives are perfect. The one thing I would recommend, which I didn't do straight away, was to paint my beehives. Now I use the normal garden paint uh, for fencing, normal fence paint, and I painted all my beehives, and now they look good, and they're very protected now. So every hive I get, I'll paint it. There's nothing wrong with pine hives, but you must paint them. You could always put a base layer on there of the like some wood treater paint, and then paint your colour on top. So I've got a colour code of my hives. I have my honey supers are all yellow, and the brood boxes are whatever colour I can think of. Queen um, extractors, uh, draining boards, all that sort of stuff. I paint black. So you normally got a big box on the bottom, the out the little green excluder, and the black, and then on top you've got the yellow honey super. But I just colour code it because I do lots of lessons with children, so they can see like, look, this is the yellow one, it's the honey super, that sort of thing. Next thing was the bee suit, of course. So there's lots out there. There's loads and loads of bee suits out there. Um, I wanted something which was going to last. I wanted to spend a lot of money on one suit and not keep having to buy suits because they tear, because the veil tears or something like that. So I went out and bought this one. There we are, from Old Castle Farm. Um, I've got two of these. I've got one for bees and one for Asian hornets now. Now these are a bit pricey. This was about £150 for this suit. Mm. And it is really, really good. So it's very, really protected. Really protects you here. Um, and it's an all in one suit and the veil if you can see the veil it's netting not made of plastic not plastic netting because i found that with plastic netting on bee suits when you have to wash them or sometimes just the strain and stress of working in them it snaps the mesh and then of course you don't want bees getting in here because that's what you don't want to do you don't want to get stung so yeah, I'd highly recommend a bee suit, top bee suit, or get the best one you can. That's what I'd recommend personally, um, because they are durable. I've been attacked by lots of bees, and the only places I've got stung are when they go down my sleeves, or up my leg, or down my leg, either way. So what I would do there is, I've learned now, as I was stung lots um, up in the apiary, to have this, I don't know if you see it, to have this, so you've got the zip, to have the zip done over your boots. So you put your boots on and then you do that over so then they can't get up or down. Same with these, so just put your gloves on, your marigolds. I recommend marigolds. And you just seal them up and it's all nice and sealed around here. The reason I recommend marigolds are because they are quite thin, but, and you will get stung through them if they decide to sting you because sometimes you're picking up a frame and you will get a bee caught between your thumb and the frame or your finger and they will sting and it does it doesn't hurt it just for a little bit of a sting <laughs> basically but i wouldn't use anything with cotton i use those gardening gloves and underneath was rubber which is perfect but on top was like cotton and the bees went for the cotton and my hands were completely stung really badly stung i think one time i received about 18 stings and that was all because i had these gloves on when i had marigolds they're fine. They don't seem to like to walk on them much, which is pretty cool. I've just seen a bee on my plant in the background, pollinating it. So that's awesome. She's getting some pollen over there. She, sorry, she's getting some pollen over there. So again, with the beehives, I was very, at the start, I was so confused. I didn't know what to get. Do I get a national? Do I get a Langstroth? So there's so much information coming at me all at once. So I decided to stick to one. You know, one bee, one beekeeper would say to me, you must go Langstroth. Another one would say, you must go 18 by 12 nationals. Or you must go standard nationals. And I was like, oh, I don't know what to do. Because I bought the beehive early on, before these beekeepers were all telling me stuff, I went for a British standard national size. So your normal frame size, your normal you know, brew box. Um, but then again, you can, it's only my first year, so, you know, I just went straight for nationals. Everything I bought was national, and they all fit perfectly. I've got national stands, I've got national brew boxes, deep brew boxes, national honey supers, national roofs, you know, all stuff like that. 
Now next season I'm going in um, to make my one of my colonies really big. So I've got a deep national suit. But just get your standard one for your first year. That's what I found anyway. I found it a lot easier. Um, and I did go cedar wood with one beehive, but I was given a polyhive um, by a really good friend of mine. And that hive is really good. So poly is quite good, a lot of beekeepers are against poly hives, but I like to try a big variety, because again, I'm trying to find my feet. So I've got my wooden one, and again, I've noticed the wooden ones during the winter, not a lot of activity. The poly nuke ones, because they warm up quicker, they hold the heat. The bees are quite active in there. So that's really cool as well. So I recommend having a mixture. Don't worry if someone says, don't get this, get this. Just get what you need to get, all right? You don't need beekeepers telling you, I mean, most of them are lovely though. Some of them are very set in their ways and they will tell you, you shouldn't be getting this, you should get this. But if I'm gonna be given a really cheap poly nuke, or if I'm given one or donated one, or if I go out and buy one, you know, or something like that, I'm gonna give it a go. And so far, they've been really good. I'm impressed with the poly nukes. They're really good, really, in really interesting to watch as well. And also you've got the clear crown board. So when you take off your top, you can see straight into the hive because there's a plastic um, a sheet over it and it's brilliant I love it you can show children that easy if they don't want to get a suit on quick just lift up the top so look here's all the bees put it down and then scarf it before the one tries to get it so not, most people just start with one beehive but with me I wanted to make something of this so I wanted to start a business with it and I became a charity and according to the charity commission in, in the UK, I am the only bee and the only beekeeper who has a charity like this. So I run a charity called Beekeeping for Hope, uh, and this has all happened since last May. <laughs> it's not even been a year, so it's been a pretty mad roller coaster. But a really good, really interesting. I don't know. But um, cause what I do is I have dedicated hives. So I've got one hive dedicated to the charity Hope for, and. When the bees make their honey, I extract it, I jar it up, sell the honey, and whatever I sell, the entire lot, 100%, goes off to charity. And I'm the only one in the UK who does that. Which I think is pretty cool. But it was quite a hard process to become a charity because they had no template, they had no one else to put me against. You know? So I had to really explain what I do, how I do it, where the funds go, and all this. So. It's been good fun though. <laughs> uh, lots of paperwork, but it, it's finally getting there. And that's why I have so many hives. I was working on, the, on an apiary from March till, when was it? March till at least November. And I, get, I got some great experience up there. It was really good. So I recommend getting out there and trying to meet up with your local beekeepers and just getting some, a taste of what it's like. I learned a lot from the old guy up there, it was good, it was good fun, just it wasn't the direction I kind of wanted to go in though. Um, but we'll see what happens, I'm open to anything, so, and as you know, so much has happened during this year, that it's been an incredible experience, honestly. So, as you know, I have five beehives now, did have just the one, and then that one turned into two, when I was kindly given one, from my friend, who's now my mentor, I don't think he knows that yet, but he's my mentor in Littlehampton. And he's been an absolute star. He gave me a colony of bees, which I dedicated to Hope for. So I had my colony, I got given to me as a swarm, a colony donated to me. And then I thought, you know what, I'm gonna try and catch my own swarm. So I used a, a brew box, actually not a brew box, I used a nuke box from the bees the guy gave me, so I put all the bees out of there, put them into a big hive, and had a little box left. I thought, I'm gonna try and catch some bees. So I stuck it up in a hidden location, and I caught a swarm of bees. So I was like, ah, awesome. So I had three, three colonies. And then I wanted to split one. I wanted to try and get as much experience as I could. So I split one of my, my big colony. But it didn't go too well, as you can see. If you look at some of my older videos, it didn't go down too well bees killed the queen and all this I got lot. it was really good experience but it wasn't a fun one so I reached out to Black Mountain Honey and he kindly sent me a queen uh, a Buckfast queen and 
doing really well, really good. I also got sent another one from him as well, and one from, I think it was BS Honey gave me a queen. So I now have five copies. Um, I did have 10 when I was working on the apri, but the apri, as he said, wasn't, wasn't for me really. Um, I work better just doing what I do, you know. <laughs> I like to learn, I just like to learn anything everyone throws at me. Um, but sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming if people are trying to force their ways on you. It just got a bit too much on the apri. So, yeah, I'll call it a day, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, I can see another bee on one of my flowers. I might go and film them in a minute, actually, because that's quite cool. I'd like to give a big shout out to lots of people who have helped me since May, and that's been as a company called Hobby, so H-O-B-E-E. -E. I'll put the name of this in the description, and I bought all my foundation from them, all my frames, and they are quality, quality stuff at really good affordable rates as well. Um, and I also have bought a lot of poly nukes and been kindly sent stuff from Payne's, Payne's Polyhives. Again, really, really good people. So I recommend you give them a bell. If you're interested in some good stuff, go to these guys. And also, one of the best beekeepers out there, in my opinion, is Black Mountain Honey, or Lawrence. And he's been really helpful through this whole process as well. He helped me with my charity. He helped me with the idea. Because my idea was to get beekeepers to donate a super of honey and he said that's probably a bit too much just do a jar so i thought yeah makes sense so i started the highs for hope initiative um, which was really helped by lawrence's advice from black mountain honey and yeah i hopefully will be working with him at some point this year so that's one awesome thing to look forward to and of course the charity status as well that opens a whole whole load of doors for us at Beekeeping for Hope. With bees, don't worry too much about making mistakes because we learn from our mistakes, don't we? But what's, what's the saying? It's something like, when, if, you, if you fail, but then you go at it again, you go in the second time with more experience. So that's probably not what the saying is, but that's what it's around, you know what I mean? So uh, don't worry about failing. I did so many mistakes with my first one. Like I said, the hive, I bought Hive, which I didn't paint, so the whittle split, and it was I was getting worried about my bees. Um, and the queens, I mean, I had a video on uh, Instagram which was just I had a queen, uh, she escaped, she flew away, but she came back, so I caught her and then I tried to put her in a little tube and she flew away. I've got over a million views on that, that is nuts. <laughs> it was nothing special, it was just a uh, I just posted it on there and it went viral. So um, don't worry about making mistakes. People like to see mistakes, but they like to see how you get over those mistakes. You know what I mean? So they like to see how you get over those mistakes. So don't worry about making mistakes, but ask for advice. Definitely ask for advice and definitely join up with Beekeepers Association. You know, um, I'll tell you some stories actually. So I had one. It's one of my videos. The old beekeeper said to me, it's a good, a good bit of advice, don't get me wrong. He said to me, when you've extracted your honey in the honey soup, in the um, extractor, when you spin it around and the honey flings out and goes into the bottom, when you've done that, get the old frames, leave them in the garden or leave them in, in the, on the grounds or whatever, and your bees will come over and clean them up. I thought, that's a brilliant idea. So I put the box in an area and left them to it. Within 10 minutes, there were bees everywhere. The entire area was covered in bees. It wasn't just one colony going for this honey, it was all of them. And they were having a massive fight. It was a fight to the death and there were dead bees everywhere. And my wife was mad because there was bees all over the place. Bees following me all over the place. And it was a nightmare. All the colonies went into the defense mode. They were all swarming outside their hives. Uh, but again, the experience was incredible. And this is what led to some of my queens just flying away. And they did come back, but they came back to one of them was a, a colony that failed. So, but the whole bee war, which I called it, was an experience. It wasn't nice to see dead bees everywhere, bees with stingers hanging out of their backs and 
it was it was a pretty nuts experience but it was again really interesting to see how bees work that they are they all work they all get on individually but when there's food around they all fight robbing bees that was another one robbing bees was a tough one Just when I split some colonies I may have done it a bit later in the year because I started late I started in May but there were all the bigger, stronger colony was just robbing all the other ones, uh, completely destroying one, so I had to move it away to another location. Uh, and and that, that was another um, crazy experience, moving that to a location which turned out to be great. The bees stopped robbing them, I moved them not too far away, it wasn't three miles away or anything, it's just maybe 100 metres away. Just put them into a nice corner with some sun and they are now a really strong, good colony. I think there's a Black Mountain Honey Queen in that one as well. What other experiences were there which were really, really tough? One thing I would have done differently next year, this new season, what I'll do differently is when I extract the honey, I won't do one super here, one super there, and another super. I'll pick a day and I'll do all my supers at once. Get the honey extractor out, start spinning, spinning the honey, you know, do it all in one go rather than just do one here and do another one there. I'll do the whole lot in one go. Then I can leave the bees to build up for the winter rather than keep taking one off here, one off there because it did annoy them. So my goals for this year are, number one, to become a fully recognized charity. That's my main, my main focus this year, just to become recognized as a charity um, and concentrate big on that helping people in Moldova, Ukraine, Turkey, Uganda, you know, all over the world, just trying to help as many people as I can with my bees helping them, you know. So I'll be doing that. Um, and I would love to make a video with other beekeepers as well. So experienced ones, novice ones like myself. I've got a few lined up and I really hope I can get to meet Black Mountain Honey, Lawrence. Sorry, Lawrence, I really hope I can get to meet Lawrence. Um, top man, so he's helped me a lot through the whole process really with his help and advice, personal help and advice, plus all his videos I watch and I learn from. So like for example the Payne's Poly Hive, I don't like the feeder. Black Mountain Honey put a video out how to remove the feeder. Perfect. Now my poly hive can have eight frames in it. You know? So so thank you Lawrence, it's awesome. As you probably see from my bee suit, I've got in here the Asian Hornet. So as you know, the Asian Hornet this year is looking to be a big threat to the UK, a big, big time threat to the UK. So the Beekeeping Association has made Asian Hornet coordinators all over the all over the country to coordinate with each other where these hornets are coming from, where they're going, where they've been seen, blah blah blah, blah all this stuff. So I've. Um, I was nominated by the Portsmouth Beekeeping Association to be the Asian Hornet Coordinator for Portsmouth and surrounding area. So I've got my work cut out this year definitely and I hope to get some video footage of going to see some beekeepers in Kent, um, in Dover, so I can experience seeing the Asian Hornet first hand. I mean I, I don't like killing insects, I don't like killing anything spiders, anything. I find insects, creation, all that absolutely fascinating. So I don't like to kill anything. But with the Asian hornet, it's a case of the hornet and the bees. Well, not just the bees, but butterflies, um, normal flies, blue bottles, honeybees, bumblebees, dragonflies. These Asian hornets eat a lot and more. <laughs> so for the greater good, I will have to sadly kill some Asian hornets. Whether it's the queen or whether it is the workers when we find their nest of destroying the nest, which will have to be done, because they will completely destroy a bee colony. Um, so as part of the Asian Hornet coordinator, I have to coordinate with people all around the UK. So I'm linked up with Isle of Wight, Southampton, Portsmouth, of course, Meon Valley and Chichester. So there's some who haven't <laughs> joined, but Hopefully in time they will, so we can all knit it together and we can all help each other. I've also applied for a licence as well to become an Asian Hornet Trap and Release guy. 
So in the UK it's illegal to catch a hornet in a cage. So grab that hornet, uh, mark its back, her back, sorry, with a tinsel or a marker pen, release the hornet. That's illegal. If a hornet's sitting down, say on a, on a I don't know, a hornet's sitting down on something and you sneak up behind her and you dab her on the back, she flies off, that's fine. So I've gone for a license from, I think it's Natural England. I applied some weeks ago, some months ago actually, to become one, one of the only ones in Hampshire. So if people need me to do it, I can just do it. I can go there, I can get their hornet they've caught, mark their hornet, let it fly off, then we can time it coming back, what direction it flew. It's the whole key to stopping the aging hornet is stopping the nest. In the early season, if we stop the queens early spring, when they emerge from hibernation, we can stop them from February to March, start of April. Um, and if we stop them, we stop an entire colony, a entire colony of aging hornets being formed. If we don't catch them, we have to start catching the workers. A lot of beekeepers want to kill the workers, which I guess you can, but we'll just endlessly be killing the workers, you know? We need to catch them. So we need to catch these workers, let them fly off, work out where the nest is. So I feel it's quite a lot of work doing this Asian Hornet stuff um, because it's an unknown job really. Because they haven't really affected the most of the UK. It's mainly been sort of in Kent, that sort of way at the moment. Uh, it's slowly creeping into Hampshire, coming to Portsmouth. There was nest spotted and, and destroyed in Southampton just last, um, last autumn. So there will be queens out there, you know. It's just a case of finding them. So I've set up some traps already. Um, I'm starting to take my Asian Hornet stuff seriously. So I've got that to do. Plus I've got a little family, you know what I mean? I've got two boys who are very interested in bees. And this year they're going to be doing a project. And the project is going to be queen rearing. I've got two queen boxes all painted up, ready for them to start rearing two queens. I want to try and replace one of my queens because she's a bit old now and the bees are getting a bit tetchy and that's in the main colony. She's a queen from last year. It's like 2022 and my queen's now from last year, 2023. Um, so that's pretty much it I think. One thing as well I would say is positioning your beehives. Don't worry too much where you position them, they'll be fine. I mean mine face south which is recommended but they're in shade, look. This area, as you can see the sun is at the back, this area won't get sun until at least mid-March. I think I just saw a bee go in there. There's some pollen on her back, on the back legs. Let's have a look. I think there's one there as well. So what's this now? This is end of January and they're bringing in pollen already, which is pretty awesome. Let's have a look at the rest. So look, so they're all they're all fine, they're all busy. They've all survived the winter, which is absolutely amazing. As you can see, this one here, I left a super of honey on this one because they, they produce so much honey, I had to, I had to leave it on. <laughs> There's so many bees in there as well. But next season, they've got a big brood box coming. So they're gonna have a big brood box, a nice deep one, so bigger than this brood box here. Um, we've got here. This one's empty, there's nothing in that one. Just storage. So I was worried about these ones because there was I wasn't seeing any bees at one point, but now there seems to be quite a few. And these guys are good. These guys will go straight into these guys will go into there. They were the ones who were a little bit small when the winter came in. So they'll go straight into there in the season. I don't like to boast or brag, but I've got all this since May. And it's mental. These are my storage. All beehives, all nuke boxes, um, supers. 
loads. People donated it to me, painted them up already. But it's mad, isn't it? How quick you can build up for beekeeping. So if this happens since May, what's going to happen this season? <laughs> it's going to be a good one, that's for sure. But I'm so pleased that all the bees have survived. There's really exciting times coming up for beekeeping for hope and I can't wait to see what next year brings to me, what it gives me, what, what I experience, where I'll be going. I've been invited to Jersey to go and see some Asian hornets. I've been invited to Kent to go and see some Asian hornets. Um, hopefully I can see Black Mountain honey. I really hope I can. It's just that he's in Wales and it's quite a trip to go to Wales. So I just hope he spare me some time, you know, I can go and see him and just make some videos, that'd be good. He's already a part of my initiative, Highs for Hope, which is cool. So guys, thanks so much for watching. If you want to reach out at for any point, for donations, for help with what we do, for advice, to come and even work in my apron with me for a bit, to come and get some hands-on bee experience, just give me a message, give me an email, write in the comment section. Um, if you want some of our honey, do the same. We're on Instagram, TikTok, um, YouTube of course. I've just started Facebook again. I've been on there for seven years. I've deleted my whole account and now I have to go back on there to promote Be Keeping for Hope. And I recommend as well you, you take a look at hobie.co.uk for some bee supplies, for some um, frames, wax, beehives. Really good bloke there. Definitely worth, you know, get in contact with and get in contact with associations as well they'll help you out and yeah make sure to subscribe to follow us to like these videos to start getting the word out there about honeybees start getting the word out there about beekeeping for hope <laughs> get the word out there to help people who need help becoming beekeepers I mean I'm new myself I'm not good but I've made my first year with no losses so I must be doing something right you know so message me for anything and I'll see if I can help but thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Oh,